Good evening and welcome to Blue Christmas. Welcome those of you who are here in this place and welcome to those of you who are joining us online this evening. This is a service of worship for all of us who carry burdens of grief, burdens of loss, fear, loneliness, or anything else that makes Christmas not so merry and bright. For those of us who just need some time to sit with our sorrow for a while. Later on in our service, we will be inviting those who wish to come forward and silently light a candle in remembrance of a loved one or a burden that you bear. And when you come forward, if you wish us to read a loved one's name out loud, um, please write that name on one of the index cards that are over there by that entrance and place it in the basket on the communion table. And please note, if you have already notified the church of your loved one's name, we have that. And you don't need to write an index card. Friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we receive our prelude. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
The Old Testament scripture is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Our second scripture reading is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn. But mourning doesn't feel like much of a blessing. It feels like falling, falling, falling down into a deep, dark pit, and we can't see the bottom. It feels like being exhausted beyond all reason without being able to sleep. It feels like an invisible vice is squeezing, squeezing, squeezing us around our heart and our head, and our gut, and we can't catch our breath or see anything clearly. It feels like being repeatedly stabbed and being oddly numb all at the same time. Mourning does not feel very blessed, and it does not feel like Christmas. Blessed are those who mourn. Well, this is my 15th December as an ordained minister of the Word and Sacrament in the Presbyterian Church. And last Sunday was the first Sunday that I ever shed serious tears while preaching to the point where I had to beg the music director for a tissue. I was talking about how hard life can be and remembering my own grief and loss 13 months after losing my husband, and I just kind of teared up. This is not a good thing for pastors to do on a regular basis, because our job is to preach the Word of God and make it come alive and not, not be a distraction and not make the congregation worry about us and feel like they have to take care of us. But I guess once every 15 years is okay. And what I've heard from a few people is that somehow the tears made me more real and helped the message sink in. Blessed are we who mourn because when our hearts are breaking and the tears flow, that gives the Holy Spirit an entry point. The walls are down. And Christ, Emmanuel, enters in in a way that we don't seem to be able to let him in when everything's going our way. Blessed are we who mourn because tears let us know that something, someone, matters. The pain of loss means we had love and will always have it even when the one we loved has passed. What a blessing to live and to love. It is what we are made for. 
Blessed are we who mourn, for our grief throws us on the mercy of God, whose love and grace have no limits. Blessed are we who mourn, because this inevitable part of being human connects us with our fellow human beings on a deeper level, much deeper level than food, folks, and fun ever can. When I am honest about my own feelings and my own grief, I become a safe person that others can come to, and so do you. I can better honor and understand the grief of others and the pain of the world. Blessed are we who mourn, for we will be comforted. God does not give us pain, but God gives us each other to help us through our pain. And God brings blessing out of the pain. And God came to us as one of us, Jesus Emmanuel. He understands our pain more than we know. He honors it more than we know. He is with us more than we know. Christmas is for us who mourn. In the presence of Christ born for us, we will at last be comforted. Thanks be to God. We light four candles tonight in remembrance of our loved ones. We light these candles for our own needs. We light them for our grief, for our losses, for our memories, and for our faith.
we light this first candle to remember those who we have loved and lost. We pause to remember clearly their faces, their voices, their bodies. We embrace and give thanks for the memories that bind them to us in this season of expectation when all creation waits for the light. We light this second candle to remember the pain of loss, loss of relationships, loss of trust, loss of jobs, loss of health, loss of faith, the loss of joy. We acknowledge and embrace the pain of the past, O oh God, and we offer it to you, asking that into our wounded hearts and open hands you will place the gift of peace. Shalom. We light this third candle to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember the past weeks, months, and for some of us years that have been heavy with our burdens. We accept and lay before you, God, the sharpness of memory, the sadness and grief, the hurt and fear, the anger and pain. We accept and lay before you the ways we feel have fall, fallen short in the times we have spent blaming ourselves and you for all that we have suffered. We accept and lay before you the time we have walked alone in darkness and in knowledge of our own mortality. We light the fourth candle to remember faith, the gift of light and hope that God offers to us in the story of Christmas, which began in an abandonment, insecurity, and humbleness in a time of war and in a poor stable. We remember that the loving God who came to share this life with us promises us comfort and peace. At this time, those of you who are here and wish to do so are invited to come forward and to silently light a candle in memory of a loved one or in remembrance of a loss or struggle you are facing. And as you come forward, again, if you have a name you would like us to read later, simply place it in the basket. If you've already let the church know of your loved one's name, you do not need to do that. We already have it. You're invited to come forward now as for a little while.
we have received a number of names to lift up this evening, loved ones that we have lost, perhaps this past year, perhaps a few years ago. Many of you cannot be with us tonight and didn't get to light a candle for your loved one. We're going to light one for you now. Um, probably sometimes one candle for several names. We will also light candles for those whose names we do not have. For those of you who are watching this and didn't have a chance to give us a name, and for those of you who are carrying burdens too private and too painful to name, whoever you are, wherever you are, and whenever you are watching this, you are included. Dorothy Crawford. Doris Darrington. Janet Metz. Day Kaufman. Mike Stuffelbean. Annette Douglas, Jan Long, Anna Hula, John Gooden, Geneva Stewart, Margaret Sandberg, Craig Underhill, Barbara Rhodes, Marilyn Beaven, Jennifer Gurulay, Lisa Turner, Jim Hoover, C.J. Richter, Neil Warner, Dorothy Warner, Kathy Ward, Rod Brown, Josh Townsend, Lisa Townsend Adair, Susan Heddinghouse, Bonnie Basinger, Betty Knobloch. Art Donnelly. and the mother of Cheryl Ann Mickey, former pastor of the Oskaloosa Presbyterian Church. In the center, we light the Christ candle, remembering that Jesus Christ is always in the center of our lives. He hears our cries. He knows our hearts. And in the midst of all our thoughts and emotion, he offers us hope and healing and grace and peace. As we light the Christ candle, we remember the names and the situations which have gone unmentioned that are in our hearts. We remember the tremendous losses of the COVID-19 pandemic and those affected by tornadoes and other natural causes.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.